It's been a pleasure meeting new friends and catching up with old ones tonight. And I am honored to accept the Afsun Courage Award. Afsun, I have to say that last night in my room, I had the biggest smile watching your earlier years of wrestling on YouTube. I saw a girl unfazed by the rules of society tried to put on her. I saw a girl far ahead of her time, challenging ideas of what it means to be a girl. And most importantly, I saw a girl doing something she absolutely loved. Your bravery and sheer determination is commendable. And thank you for being so courageous and paving the way for female wrestling. We can't talk about courage without talking about resiliency. It is often our darkest times that bring light to what we are truly made of. Who are you when you are faced with fear or difficulty? What do you do if the odds you stacked against you? Would you put others before your own interests? Can you persevere even though there is fear or danger that is sure to arise during your journey? What I know for sure about courage is that we are all capable of it. While courage does, see, does seem to come more naturally for some, it arises in all of our daily lives in all kinds of ways. In wrestling, we see it when a young girl shows up to a wrestling practice in a room full of boys. When Afsun broke new territory and took home your country's first female world medal in 1989 or when Helen captured America's first female Olympic gold medal in Rio, only for Tamara's Mensa stock to follow in the following Olympics, becoming the first African-American to do so. Courage may be watching an athlete become a mom to twins and come back to earn your country's spot in the next coming Olympics. It may also be Jer Jenna Burkett being the bravest and most courageous athlete I watched during the US trials and showing her strength and determination to compete in honor of her late mother. Watching these courageous acts makes this world a little warmer and a little kinder. We are all capable of practice encouraging of courage and there are plenty of examples to learn from. The catch is, courage is usually found on the harder less traveled paths that are guaranteed to be full of un unexpected twists and turns along the way. I have had my fair share of unexpected twists and turns within the last three years. I have been challenged in more ways than I could ever imagine, forging paths I didn't think I'd be on and fighting fears I never thought I'd have. I have cried, laughed, screamed, and fallen to my knees more times in these last three years than in my thir entire 36 years of life. And somehow, here I am, standing in front of all of you this evening, holding on to hope and holding on to light and not giving up. In 2020, I came back to com competition after taking an 18-month hiatus to heal what was called a career-ending knee injury. Now, wrestlers are going to understand this. I completely ruptured not just my ACL, my LCL, my MCL, lateral and medial meniscus, soleus right off the bone, and my IT band. That's not supposed to break. <laughs> and that was all in the first 10 seconds of a gold medal match in the Commonwealth Games. After two surgeries and countless hours of rehabilitation, I barely made it back on the mats in time to train for our national team trials for Tokyo 2020. In fact, I just had 65 days to train for our trials. I did what so many people thought was impossible. I won our national qualifiers and was on route to fulfilling my Olympic dream. Life was going great and my eyes were fiercely set on Tokyo. However, as I continued to push hard to prepare for the Pan Am Olympic qualifiers, I seemed to fatigue far quicker than usual. I asked several doctors for help to understand what was going on. I don't think any of them took me seriously based on my age and my fitness level. Every single one of the doctors eventually came back to me and told me that I was fine and my exhaustion was probably due to my training load. However, my training load was something I have never had a problem with in the past. 
when I was also working full time on top of training. I wasn't tired due to the train load. I knew the difference. I felt different. It just hadn't had the correct answer yet. By the time Pan Am qualifiers arrived, I was throwing up in the morning and so exhausted that the goal that I worked so hard for now seemed much more of a burden than a dream. I did not qualify for the Olympics that day. I spent the following two weeks sick and in bed. As the world shut down directly after Pan Ams due to COVID, so did the access to doctors. No one would look at a physically active woman who had symptoms that easily mirrored minor ailments. Now, adding one more layer to this messy time, my coach of over a decade decided he didn't want to coach women's wrestling anymore. We had a conversation about his reasons why and that he felt that women, and I quote, he said were too dangerous to coach. He said he would coach a select few that just happened to be the best in the room. Those select women would then be allowed to train in the men's room. I made the cut. I told him I couldn't do it. I couldn't lead a room of women who had been there for me by my side through it all. They need leaders and I believe it is what we leave for the next generation that matters most. My coach said, what do you care? You're retiring in a year. Well, the truth is, is I cared and I care very much. I care that women are still being labeled as trouble. I care that an entire gender was deemed too dangerous to coach. I care about my teammates, both men and women. Staying in that room would be me promoting a toxic sport culture and saying it was okay. I made the choice that many said, don't do. It is too close to Tokyo to make such a drastic change. Even if, it is, even if what is happening is not right, just don't leave. I made the choice that made no financial sense, but all the moral sense in the world. I left for a new club in a different province that promised me no extra coaching. It was a space where I was valued for my skill and not considered a problem because of my gender. I wanted to share that story because it was the top, first the start of me really knowing myself and having the courage to leave a place I really loved and called home for a much bigger reason. I could look myself in the mirror and I know that although it wasn't an easy choice, it was the right choice. This moment helped me tap into another level of strength that I would need in the very near future. Now for the crazy part, if it isn't already. I competed in Italy for the World Ranking Series in March. By now, my knee had started to move better, but I was still constantly ill and tired. My team saw it as a good sign that I won the tournament. So did I. Tokyo was only a few months away. What we didn't know was that it would be the last time I would step on that mat to compete. At this point, I had ne never, or sorry, at this point I had seen over a dozen doctors, all with no answers to my concerns. The final straw was coming home from Rome and collapsing to my knees during practice. I begged doctors and friends to pull some strings and get help before the next qualifying tournament. I was desperate for someone to just listen. A teammate made a phone call to a doctor that agreed to see me the next day. I remember, telling, I remember her telling me that it was nothing serious and I would see a specialist just to be sure. The specialist was so certain she had solved my problems and she had booked me in for a minor procedure to remove uterine polyps the next day. She said, although it was probably not necessary, a biopsy before the procedure was protocol, but it wasn't expecting anything of concern. She was so certain that she had already scheduled me in for the minor day surgery. The day before the surgery, I received a call that would forever change my life. It was those dire words you never want to hear. Michelle, you have cancer and it's serious. Within a week, 
I went through an intense round of IBS treatment and egg retrieval, followed by an aggressive radiation and chemotherapy treatments. I would later be diagnosed with stage four cervical cancer, thyroid cancer, which I personally believe is the amount of radiation treatment that I have received, and just recently a brain tumor that I thankfully learned is benign. I have also grieved the loss of motherhood after two failed att surrogacy, surrogacy attempts with my twin sister. However, what I thought would break me didn't. What I thought was too much to fight through wasn't. I have had to wake up every day for the last two and a half years and choose to fight. There have been dark days where the pain, both emotionally and physically, seemed too heavy to hold. But those days are the days that I know are not real because fear is a story we tell ourselves. I cannot lean into those days of fear for comfort because I know if I do, what would come next would be far worse. Every day I actively choose to believe in hope and to manifest a life of health and abundance. I would not be standing here today if I did not aggressively advocate for my health. My twin sister began a war path to fight for and with me. I believe that there is a way to conquer aggressive cancer, and I refuse to stop until I find a way to reach remission. I have tried many forms of treatment, both conventional and non-conventional. It has been challenging because as soon as we think we have a grasp of this disease, it plays a nasty trick on us. That is why cancer is so hard to deal with. There are countless pathways it can take within your body. I have faith that I will never let cancer take a hold of. I grasp onto hope that my sister and I can find a way to come out as winners against cancer. Since my diagnosis, I've been quite quiet about my journey mainly because most of my efforts and time are put towards finding ways to heal my body. I dream of feeling free again. I dream of more time with my family and my loved ones. They are my heart and soul. I wanted to share this story with you tonight because I want you all to know that no matter how unfair the cards are stacked against you, there is always hope. There is always a way, light always wins, and we always have a choice, always. Never ever stop fighting and take the path in life where you feel most aligned with yourself. Choose courage over fear and you will never be dis disappointed. Thank you.